But like looking at it today, you know, the CIA thing is such an interesting subcategory online. I see the worst of it because of all the content with like Bustamante and stuff where mm-hmm. I see what people say. But what's your – like I, I personally – subscribe to the idea that no place is perfect and mistakes get made and there are bad people in anything that ever happens, right? Like whether it be government, private, whatever, you're always going to have some bad people. But, you know, with all the heat that people put on the CIA online these days, like even on your episode with Bustamante, I know a lot of your fans were talking about that just like they were on all his other videos as well. Like, oh, you can't talk to this fucking CIA guy, can't be trusted, like whatever. Like what's your attitude on the agency how do you view their work in the world do you think do you think they're extremely important or do you think they got to be tamped back like what's what's your takeaway i mean i understand everybody's frustration you know what i mean i get frustrated with it too uh i think 99 percent of the people that work over there are solid americans doing great work and the agency is the best at what they do i've seen i've i've seen how other other countries operate uh, with the with the the equivalent, and we are, for the most part, leaps and bounds over anything any other country does. Um, unfortunately, you know, sometimes bad leadership will bring a bad rap to an organization, and uh, and you know, people have a right to be pissed. I don't fucking blame them. Yeah, you know, yeah. I feel the same way about the FBI. But I know lots of people that work for the FBI, and they're not bad people. Yeah. But, you know, so I, I, I get it, man. You know what I mean? It is bad shit has happened. A lot of good stuff's happened, too. The thing I always try to remember is, is that last point you're making right there. It's like we don't really see the good shit. Yeah. You generally only hear about the bad shit, yeah. right? And sometimes, like, yeah, like you hear it, and you're like, that's bad. Like, heads need to roll for that. That is what it is. But, you know, when I start seeing, we talk, we've we talked a lot about today, like, the division in the country and how things are pushed on society. And I start seeing, you know, three, four years ago, everyone's like, defund the police, right, at yeah. this level. And now you're seeing, like, defund the three-letter agencies, get rid of them. This, yeah. this zero or a hundred mindset that we seem to have in society with what I would characterize as whether you like it or not, some very important things, right? I got a lot of problem with policing in this country. We can't have a country without police though, right? I got a lot of problem with MK Ultra and some other things that the CIA has done. I also, in some things, recognize like maybe the intentions were okay, the execution was just bad, but like they also are like the first line of defense in, in, in the information war around the world. Like, do you just want to get rid of that? Like it doesn't really work that way. <clears throat> I'll put it to you this way. Throughout my entire career, minus bin Laden, the number one guy had about a two week life expectancy. Oh. Right. So that means there were a lot of number one guys. <laughs> and that's because the CIA is so fucking good at what they do. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, bin, and Bin Laden was such a... And if so, if the CIA wasn't around, the number one guy would probably still be there. You know, but every two weeks, there's a new number one. Every two weeks. It's they keep, of, they keep of having to replace them because the intelligence comes out and then we fucking kill them. And then the intelligence comes out and he gets killed. And he gets killed. And he gets killed. So we went through a lot of number ones and even more number twos and even more number threes. And that's all because of the work that these people are doing over at CIA, NSA, you know. I'd like to correct myself in the next section. I'm not trying to put out any disinformation here, but it did come to me in a conversation after we recorded this podcast uh, with a former colleague of mine that it was the number two that had a two-week life expectancy, not the number one. So I apologize for any confusion that uh, this may have caused, but I just want to set the record straight and say that was the number two that had the two-week life expectancy, 
not the number one. We're talking about high value targets that the CIA was after. And there's still things like we should raise. I mean, obviously you and I would have a disagreement with Andy on some issues with like privacy and domestically, like some of those things. I understand where he's coming from because of his, you know, where he was and his worldview. But, you know, I think those are good arguments to have publicly and to keep places like that in check. I don't think those arguments should go to fuck these people, get rid of them. Like that just doesn't, you don't really get to in life, at least from what I've seen in my young years, like you don't really get to pick up your ball and go home. Yeah. Like that's not really how the world works. You, you Sometimes you got to play ball with people that maybe you don't love, you know? And it's like, okay, people have issues with things the CIA did. We'll talk about it on here. We do. But like, get rid of it and watch what happens. Yeah. It's command structure. That's what needs to be reorganized. Mm. I feel like some interesting people find their way to the top of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. You know what's funny? The guy who oversaw, because the CIA like officially started after World War II. I guess it was the OSS before that. But like CIA was like 48 or something. The guy who oversaw probably the most tumultuous years in the history of the CIA was George Tenet from 97 to 2004. I mean, we can all do math out there and figure out what happened. And yet when you hear all these ex-head guys talk and you hear him talk, he's the realest and most likable guy of all of them. And the thing that I think, and when, when I talked to CIA guys who served under him, like Jim Lawler was like reading, he had, he had a, in his pocket, he had like a notebook with a, with like letters, like handwritten letters that George Tennant has sent him. And like, they talk about him like such a saint. And I, if I could guess from totally from the outside, one of the big problems that perhaps some of these most senior positions have is you get people up there who have zero empathy and no, no understand. Like they look at everything as X's and O's. And a guy like him who happened to be there during, you know, there was some problem with politics during that time that he didn't really have control over. But, like, that's one thing that he understood pretty well. And I kind of wonder, forget some of the things that happened there and who you want to blame for that. But I wonder if leadership had more people with his personality traits, if things would be a little different. Because sometimes from the outside, it seems like a lot of these people who make their way to the top are very cold and calculating. I mean <clears> – <throat> I don't really know what to add to that, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it's, All right. I mean, so I'm I, on to something. Yeah, I don't know what to add to that. So, thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.